Florida State entered its first ACC season with high expectations. Priorities in Seminole country have changed. Winning the ACC title would now have to come before winning a national title. The Knowles traveled to Atlanta to face a Georgia Tech squad that they had never beaten. In fact, FSU had an 0-8 lifetime mark against the rambling wreck. The Knowles were also in search of an offensive groove. Junior quarterback Charlie Ward had struggled early with an interception problem, and fans were starting to get a little restless. Florida State looked as if it would make an easy night of it early as they march right down the field against the Tech defense. However, the offense would struggle to effectively move the ball for the remainder of the first half. Georgia Tech stayed in this contest behind the leg of Scott Sisson. On the second series of the third quarter, Sean Jones, a high school rival of Charlie Ward, found the Seminole defense napping on a 41-yard pass. After Dorsey Levens pushed it in, Tech was suddenly in control. Another Ward interception put Tech in business at FSU's 10. Sisson added a 20-yard field goal early in the fourth quarter. You can't go out and you can't take people lightly. You can get beat on any given day. And that game seemed like everything went wrong for us. That probably could go wrong. Charlie was struggling. Um, the type of offense we was running, I guess it wasn't suiting him. You know, our leader of the defense went down and everybody was, you know, just trying to find a way. Ward, close to being benched for the remainder of the contest, suddenly was resurrected. Moving to the shotgun and no huddle offense, the Charlie Ward era at Florida State truly had begun. With their inspirational leader, Marvin Jones, on the bench, Derek Brooks stepped up to make a name for himself. You look over at Marvin and he said, I mean, just go out there and just play hard. You know, y'all play hard for me. And that, that got us motivated. And, and just some inside of me, I was forced enough to, you know, just make a few tags and come up with a few big plays that game. And, and just seeing how we came together again in a time of need with our back against the wall. It was difficult from the point of, uh, you know, when everybody thinks you're a good player or a great player, I mean, that, that's, that's the time when you really want to be with your team is when you're behind. But the leg of Scott Sisson proved deadly again as he answered FSU with a 35-yard field goal, and the lead was 24-14 with five minutes and change left. Ward again moved FSU's offense 80 yards via the medium pass and scrambles. FSU then goes with the onside kick, recovers, and begins the game-winning drive. Ward accounted for 206 of the 207 yards on the last three drives as FSU pulled victory from the arms of defeat. The great finish that he had that was seen on national television when the World Series, I think, was playing right there in Atlanta. It just made, I mean, it made headlines all over the, all over the world, you know, and really it's the game that made Charlie Ward. 
that kind of set the tone offensively of the way we were going to play for the rest of Charlie's career. We finally found an offense that we could run, and the next few games weren't even close, you know, in the shotgun. And it's like our offense was high octane. They were ready to go when nobody stopped them. In the defense, we just rose our level of play up, and I just think that started a trend as far as the defense is getting better. And I really do think that was a turning point that really much led us on to the national championship. Uh, 14 down against them for a ball game that would have been the Atlantic Coast Conference champions and a major bowl and you're staying in the national picture. Uh, that was a mighty big uh, comeback win.